Hey guys, this is Hell Hades free to play, and we're back on the free to play account. So what we're doing? I'm going to do a video where I walk through me trying to push a couple of dungeons. So basically, I'm hard on the epics for the fusion right now. Uh, currently, we've got this kind of fire knights set up to go. I'm only like auto in stage 15. I really want to push myself at least to stage 17. Um, I want to stop having the opportunity on stage 15 where you can still get mystery shards, you know, all that type of crap. As soon as you move beyond 15, you get beyond that and you start to actually get just gear or sh um, blue shard drops, ancient shards. And then once you start getting to like 17, 17 is an important milestone because it's actually one of the Arbiter missions. You have to auto stage 17 so many times. And then really, it gets juicy when you get to 20 and you're just getting five or six star drops. The further you get up, the better chance you are going to have of getting five and six star drops anyway. Uh, and also the better chance you're going to have of getting epic and legendary pieces. So you kind of always just want to farm as high up as you can. Um, but obviously the, the kind of real goal is to get yourself to stage 20. Um, super important at the minute because super raids are active. Yeah, on finite, it's really important to make sure that your team is a hundred percent team. You don't want to be wasting double energy on uh, losing runs. Uh, and they've just announced in game, so this this super raid falls in line with the current fusion event that is running. I think it's a tournament rather than an event. Yeah, finites, which is going to help me get to uh, Demetrius fragments, which I need. So I need the fragments here uh, to have any chance of completing this epic at all. Um, and then there's also going to be, if we check out the news, this is not a fun one to do, but there's also going to be an Ice Golem tournament, which drops from, what's that, Sunday, yeah, for Tylisa. And I'm still on, on track to be able to pull those as well, to be honest. So it kind of makes sense that I do it, providing I've got enough energy to do it. Now, they're going to drop a Super Raid at the same time. And for Ice Golem, honestly, it's the most boring dungeon out of the lot. Um... I'm already auto in stage 20, so I can show you the team that I'm running for that. Um, but the fact that it's going to be a super raid is kind of brilliant because it just means I've got to spend less time watching Ice Golem die. Um, but yeah, I can show you the team that I'm running for that as well. Now, I've got a buttload of energy here. Look at this. You're probably like, free to play? Where's all the energy coming from, Hell Hades? You cheater. Um, this is interesting. So I literally just got today's energy. So day 107. That's how long I've been playing the free-to-play for. I've got 650 energy, which is a chunk. Um, I also had, obviously, my starter energy for the day. I also cleared a bunch more of Doom Tower, and I think I've got energy along the way in a level here somewhere, or maybe when I completed it, I can't remember. Um, and I also have collected already for the day my energy here, my energy for quests, uh, and then I've got one more energy chunk for quest here, and a chunk of energy in here. So, you know, and, and I've done my five arena hits, which got me energy for that. So it's kind of like, bam, all of a sudden you've got over a thousand energy without touching your gem stash, just by doing the other things which are just open to you in the game. And on top of that, we've also just got this promo code, gift one, if you've not already done it, gift one promo code, which is another 500 energy. So I've actually got like 1900 energy I can throw into Fire Knight right now. And as long as I get a bit further up, you know, maybe stage 17, that will actually enable me to uh, get a, a long way towards um, Dimitra's uh, fragments here. So, and once you've got to this stage, if there's nothing else going on, you might as well push for the book, honestly, um, if you're in that type of boat. So we'll see how we get on for that. Uh, and just before we get into the builds and stuff, in terms of how close am I, I have got 60 fragments so far for Do the Hunger. I'm on track for this one. 45 so far for Dimithar. Uh, Scabbers, I missed some of the fragments from one of the last events. So I think it was the artifact, no, the um, champion training event. I missed some fragments there. It's still possible, but I'm kind of less fussed about him anyway. And then Tylesia, uh, I think I've got all of the ones that have been available so far for this one. So. So far, so good. So I just want to quickly thank Soundstripe, who are a sponsor on my channel. Uh, basically, Soundstripe do royalty-free music for streamers or YouTubers. So I use Soundstripe whenever I'm streaming. Basically, I've got my own playlist set up. And I've just launched this um, Twitch Pro extension. 
So basically there are playlists curated for streamers and providing you've got a Soundstripe plan, uh, you actually get it as a free addition to whatever you're doing. So if you want to get one, if you're if somebody does streaming or, or YouTube or whatever, um, there'll be a link down below with my promo code HellHades, you'll get 15% off any of the plans, uh, but you can come in and use the Twitch extension and basically just have playlists available to you to stream as you're doing content. Let's get back to the video. Right then, let's get on to deal with Finite. So I guess this is quite a cool addition, what they've put into the game. Uh, this kind of boss guy just helps you re-familiarize yourself with the boss. I don't always take on the tips, but it's just worth kind of understanding what the boss is going to do to you. Um, so everything he does is AOE attacks. He can put decreased speed on you, fine. Um, he's also got a shield. Yeah, um, starts a battle with a divine shield. I'm not sure if, if they've been playing a bit of Hearthstone here. Uh, while active, the shield reduces the damage he takes by 80%. You've got to beat the shield down before you start doing damage to him. Depending on the level you're facing, there's more layers of shield. So as soon as I get to like stage 15 plus, I'm, I'm smacking down 10 layers of shield. Uh, and then if you're in like the high 20 stages, then it's 12 layers of shield. Um, other than that, it's basically just a straight up turn meter fight. So once you've beaten his shield down, you've then got to keep his turn meter under control. Things like just drop turn meter abilities, decreased speed abilities will help you a lot. Um, he heals when he gets a turn. So you want to have someone who puts heal reduction on just to make sure that if he is getting turns, he's not healing back up. Um, and then other than that, it's, it's laying the nukes, right? So let me talk you through the champions that I've got available for this. And I, I'm pretty blessed, I'd say, on my free-to-play. I've got some good champions to deal with this. Um, so I've got Deacon as my decreased defense champion. He's got a bit of a turn meter reduction as well. He's got a double hit A1, which helps me get through the shield a touch. So in terms of like decreased defense champions, he's one of the better ones for Finite. I've also got a Zargala, who is six star now. So if I need to switch affinities because Deacon's the weak affinity, I can now actually throw Zargala in and she's got a triple hitter on her decreased defense ability and she's good for waves. So she's a good kind of sub in for Deacon when I need her. I've got a speed champion in Apothecary who's got a triple hit A1 um, and he's got obviously increased speed. So he's got a bit of turn meter in a positive way for me and um, a nice multi-hitter to get through Finite Shield. I have got uh, Geomancer who's still freaking amazing by the way who's got a nice A3 to drop turn meter and potentially get through some layers of shield because of his passive as long as his burn goes on. Um, I've actually got Venomage who brings a heal reduction, which is nice. Um, so that heal reduction goes on for three turns. So as soon as it's on there, he's probably not going to heal up for quite a while, which is really important to me. Um, she's also got a two hitter on her A1, which makes it, it's just big. Like everything about that is big. And she brings decreased attack so that if he does get a turn, he's not slamming me too hard. So she's pretty awesome here. I've got Farak in the fat who's got ally attack. So ally attack means that we get a chance of smacking that shield multiple times with everybody's A1, which is really strong finite. Um, I've got Armaga, who I leveled up before I own Coldheart. Armaga's just got turn to control coming for days. Basically top three champion in the game for turn meter control. Um, and he's an uncommon, so anyone can get him and just level him out. So that's probably like the basis of my team. Um, I do have a Coldheart who is not built yet and is probably up there as like a top five finite champion. She's got heal reduction A1, four hits on her A1, and her AI is clever. Not many champions have got a clever AI. She will just throw the A1s into the shield until the shield disappears before she does all of her good abilities. So as soon as I can get her to six star, the easier it'll be for me to kill finite. But at five star, because she's so squishy, she only got like 10K base health at five star, 500 base defense if she takes a hit she's dead so i don't think at five stars she's going to make make the cuts but she's going to be my next person like six star up um before i use some of these champions kale is kind of good because he's got a four hitter a three but i don't use him anymore for this um ninja's okay because he's got a three hitter here plus he just does a ton of damage um and people like magnar magnar's good but he doesn't have much in the way of multi-hits for 
finite. He's just a good kind of wave clearer. So he wouldn't come into this type of team. Um, so let's get into it. I think I'm going to stick with this setup for now. I, I feel like this is my core team. Drop defense, speed up, um, turn me to control, ally attack to get through shield, heal reduction. Yeah, I feel like that's my core. Let me show you how I've got them built quickly. So as fast as he can be is Apothecary. I could do with more defense on him, if I'm honest, but he's got a good amount of crit rate, good amount of speed, doesn't need any accuracy in his build. Armaga is in destroyed gear to deal with Scarab boss, but he's 200 speed, 200 accuracy, 100% crit rate. The important stats on an Armaga are his, his speed, his crit rate, his accuracy. And then other than that, you try and keep him alive um, to keep things going. Don't worry about his damage. Uh, worry about trying to keep him alive. At the minute, my one is kind of squishy um, and doesn't have full masteries. He's got a few masteries, but one of the most important ones here is this evil eye to help us keep that turn meter down at the start. Masteries on my apothecary as per. Uh, my Farakin masteries got evil eye as well to keep that turn meter down. Got war master as his main. He's got life steal gear on just because because that's what I had available. Um, no other reason than that. Quite fast, good accuracy to land his debuffs. Um, and then other than that, it's just trying to stay alive and, and do a bit of damage. He's in perception gear and life steal. My Venom Mage is basically in a clan boss build. So 2.5k defense, 29k HP. It's kind of okay. Couple of hundred speed again. You see the theme here, couple of hundred speed, good amount of accuracy. In fact, way too much now because I've actually got a banner on her now. So I could switch out her banner if I wanted to for like a HP banner or a, a speed banner. Uh, sorry, a defense banner or something like that if I had the silver to do it. Um, one, two. Deacon is in his clan boss build as well. A couple of hundred speed, 260 accuracy. Same theme. Yeah, and then survivability after that. And that is my full team, is it? I think I've shown you everyone. Yeah. So let's watch it through. I'm not going to press Super Rage yet. So I want to see how effective it is. We're on stage 16, which is a void stage. So this is a good leveler because I'm not worried about affinity at all here. I'm just worried about can the team get the job done? And you'll see that my decal was fastest, which means that he gets his decreased defense away before any of my damage get any hits. It's really important that your decreased defense, apart from maybe your speed champion, but your decreased defense needs to be laying that drop defense before anything else. Deacon's great because he rotates back through it really fast. And then you don't need a lot of damage. I don't, you just saw my build. No one's in here to nuke, okay? Nobody's nuking, but I've got enough damage to just kind of slowly whittle down the team. Everyone with Warmaster or Giant Slayer at this point. Um, I hope we don't take too many hits because I, I'm not that strong. I do have a heal with my Apothecary to kind of help me stay in the game if we need it. So we get onto the boss here. If you're struggling on waves, bring someone else that does control, basically. Uh, we want it to be auto. So if I'm manual in, I'm going to be getting hits away on the boss. Um, there's that ally attack. Beautiful. Gets us through that first shield nice and quick. If I'm manual in, I would just be doing the A1s to get the multi-hits away, yeah? But I can't, I can't do that on auto. And I want this to run on auto for the super raids. So I have to just watch it through on auto and just... You know, hope that abilities land in the right orders. We've got the turn meter drops from A1s where they've got that evil eye. And we've got the heal reduction out already. We've got Armaga doing his thing on the turn meter control. And this looks solid for a stage 16 auto farm. Even if we took a hit now, he's got decreased attack on himself. He's got heal reduction on. And we've got a bunch of damage that's going to proc from poison and uh, HP burn. So... This is smooth as silk for stage 16, which is nice. So it means that I no longer will get mystery shards. That's great. Um, let's move on to the next one. Okay, on to stage 17. So we're on to force affinity, which is strong affinity for um, no, Deacon, Armaga, and uh, Farakin. So that's good. Weak affinity for uh, Apothecary and Venomage, which pretty much means that the mobs should go after um, those two, yeah? Just because of affinity. So the affinity will start kicking in. My biggest nightmare really is, is magic affinity because Deacon dropping defense is important. Turn meter control from Armaga is important. And if both of those can get weak hitted, weak hits dropping in, it means that 
I've got a much higher chance of um, failing a run, which means it would be not very good auto run. Weirdly, Armager's just been hit there. I don't know why they would choose Armager over Apothecary or Venomage, really. Maybe Armager's just that much weaker in terms of his HP level, but that is kind of weird to me. So we're on to wave two. Drop defenses out there nice and early again. The, the waves feel really slick. And honestly, if I, when I get Scylla the Drakes, Scylla the Drakes would come in here as another control champion. And at that point, the waves have got no chance at all. Um, as it is, we eventually get to the point where a couple of the mobs seem to get a turn. And it's whether or not I can kind of take a hit. See that? So we've taken a hit. It's not too bad. And we're going to be onto the boss in, again, pretty good time, really. Just wasted our heal reduction there like an idiot. Why didn't you A1 it, Venomage? Um, and now kind of what you want is just to get through this shield as quick as you can again. Um, a lot of it's down to RNG. You know, are we getting the hits away that we need? We're going to get Armaga started. There he goes, bam. Gets his turn meter drop away. We've got an, another ally attack coming in. So big. Which means that Armour gets another A1 and drops turn meter again. And at this stage, it's now, can Armour keep the turn meter down? Which I think he does. And that's stage 17 on farm. That's stage 17 on farm. I, I would run it maybe two or three more times watching it before I would start super raiding. Just to make sure that I'm happy. But that feels pretty damn slick to me. No real threat on the waves. And even if the boss got a turn... I've got enough about this team to get back in control again. So it looks like he's kind of getting a, a bit of a high turn meter. That's where Farakin comes in, gives us another ally attack. I do have him booked on his ally attack, so it's booked to four turns now. I booked his most recent one that I booked out. And in fact, all of these champions are booked on their main abilities. Apothecary and Armaga fully booked. Farakin is booked on his ally attack. Um, Deacon's fully booked, and Venomage is booked on her A2 and her A3, but not fully on her A1. So everyone's got really a really good set of books in play for Finite. So that's a 2 minute 50, nearly 3 minute run, but consistent one. I'll take that. Starting to get some savage here. Look at this piece. Beautiful. Um, do we keep going? Stage 18 is spirit affinity which is probably my strongest affinity honestly so all neutral and then too strong so this this probably should be one that i can beat i should be able to beat this one um i would have thought with the same setup so what we're going to do i'll let this one play through we're going to play a bit of soundstripe music in the background um and see how we get on with this one <laughs>
go i mean we beat the fire knight three minutes 14 the fire knight did get a turn actually because armor got a resist that could be a three percent random chance for him to get resisted it might be because of his accuracy was a bit low i don't think it was his accuracy he's got 200 it should be enough for this level um also on the waves you noticed how tanky the waves were compared to what we saw even on stage 17 so we're getting to the point now where this team is is basically hitting its max i think this is an auto farm if I wanted it to be a little bit more consistent and made sure it was an auto farm, I could just put Farak in instead of in lifesteal gear. I could put him into a shield set so that when we're against those waves, I've got a bit more protection. So I would run it a few more times just to make sure that that was consistent. We then come to what is my worst affinity, stage 19. Um, and stage 20 is force affinity, which is kind of like okay for me but i think i'm going to leave it there on the free to play um i think i'll be pushing it to a level where i just don't get consistent runs anymore from 19 onwards so i think that's going to be it for uh for finite for me and then in preparation for ice golem well i can just show you the team that i've got running already um maybe i'll change it up a bit now that i've got some better champs as well so i think armager does come in now because of his block revive chance on the side ads albeit we've got such good champions here um poison is really nice against ice golem ninja's just good anywhere anywhere <laughs> anyway um so i think maybe geo comes out maybe like this i think of affinity as well kind of like for in here as well you know because of his poisons but i think we'll leave it at this so it's, it's the same type of um, challenge, really. We've got our drop defense goes first. Yeah, and hopefully we land it everywhere. We didn't land it on, on one that time. I probably should tee this up so that Ninja always does his A3 first in terms of like setting up the AI. But his A3 comes in anyway. The freeze on an AoE against mobs on stage 20 is massive. So we lose a little bit of damage, but they don't get a turn which means that we can just kind of mosey our way through the, the wave. Um, I'll let this play through uh, with some tunes and you can kind of see it in action. But poison here, burns, block revive chance, speed up and a bit of healing and drop defense. And again, let's let Soundstripe play us through.
and there we go so we've got an ice golem 20 on farm uh, the, the one change i would make to this team when i can is someone who does a more consistent decrease attack so i do have in my champion pool i can't think what his name is duke the pierced duke the pierced would come out for me instead of deacon for these runs just because he's got an aoe drop attack and defense similar to stagnite stagnite would do this really well as well uh, because i've already got deacon built he's not on like the top of my priority list and I, I didn't need a magic affinity champion for the arbiter missions at this stage so he will be someone that i level up and build out because for ice golem he's just straight up better than deke but there you go guys ice golem done stage 20 i moved on to stage 18 full farm on finites um, hopefully the video helps you develop your teams and um, thank you again to soundstrike for sponsoring the video I've been Hell Hades. I will see you later.